What is up, YouTube? I know it has been forever since I have been on, but before I get into all of that, if you guys just wanna go straight to the tutorial, here's the timestamp right down here. Just go there and uh, you will see what you wanna see, what you're here for. But for anyone who cares, I took a little bit of time off of YouTube, I know, but I am back. DaVinci Resolve 17 is here and it is amazing. The changes they have made are absolutely game changing and one of my most favorite changes they made or one of the new things they incorporated is called the magic mask and that is literally how you saw the intro i just did i use a magic mask for it and it's kind of the equivalent of the roto 2 or the roto brush in after effects if anyone has ever used that and all the after effects users coming to the da vinci now you have the roto brush or in our case the magic mask and it is absolutely amazing like i just got done saying it literally takes away all of the keyframes and like going forward a frame, adjusting four or five keyframes, another forward frame and doing that all over again. It literally with their neuro engine, it just does it all for you and it is almost spot on like every time. I'm excited to jump into DaVinci and show you guys how great this tool actually really is and how you can utilize it in your projects each and every day. All right, let's get after it. All right, guys, we are back here in DaVinci Resolve yet again. It seems like forever since we have been in here. And the only thing different this time is we are in DaVinci Resolve 17. And I am so excited to start deep diving into all the new features that DaVinci Resolve 17 has to offer. The goal of today is to be able to create, let's put a title in here. And we want to put a title behind this guy. We want to put it like right about there. Let's just type in, let's go resolve 17. And we're gonna scale it up. Let's make it a different color. Let's make it teal, or let's go like a dark blue. That looks good right there, just like that. All right, see, we want that text to be behind him, not in front of him. And the traditional way to do this would be to go through and draw a mask around him and track that mask to him or have to go through and move each individual point of that mask to make it perfect. There is no need to do that anymore. And I'm gonna show you how. So the first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna turn that text layer off just so it doesn't get in our way. We'll come back to it, don't worry. Come down to the color tab and make sure you are under right here where it says magic mask. Click that tab in your toolbar here. It's the little person with a square around them. Let's make sure we're on frame number one. And as you can see right here, we have a person selection or a features selection. We can do arms, head, or arms, face, hair, hat. And I think you would utilize this for different um, exposure control or color control or any type of like color grading adjustment. I think these will come really in handy and they can come handy in for masking out. But for this, we're gonna use the person and I would like to see them add in like maybe some kind of like buildings or like any kind of like landscape item where that, it still works with landscape stuff. I've used it. It's just a little bit more tedious. It still beats having to keyframe and adjust every point of your mask. So, but getting into it, let's come over here. We're going to make sure that our mask overlay is on right now. I just turned it off. Let's turn that back on. If you want to put this on, that's invert mask, but we don't want to invert it. We want to keep it the way it is. We're gonna come over here to the plus eyedropper and you just gotta draw a little line. And just like that, it's already not a terrible mask, just like that. So what we wanna do is make sure we're on better and we want to make sure our smart radius, we just pull that up just a little bit. And as you can see, what, we, what happens when we play with this smart radius, if you watch these edges, is it brings it in. If you pull it to the right, it'll bring them in. If we pull it out to the left, it makes those smart edges wider, or it makes your mask bigger, almost like a mask expansion. So we're going to pull it to the right. I wanna bring it in just a little bit. That's a little bit too much. So we're gonna come out right about there. And if you come down to radius, I always drag that up just a little bit. Oh, we're under consistency, radius, here we go. Just drag it up just a little bit, maybe to one. And you can just play with these. I like to denoise it. I know it's kind of more of a uh, color grading, but it also kind of softens these edges, almost acts as a feather. So we can blur the radius as well. So now 
that's not a bad looking mask. And if we can see over here, we don't have part of his face. All you have to do is draw a little baby line like that. And there we go. Now let's say we selected something that we don't want masked out. Like let's say here, I'll just select something just for fun. Right down here. I accidentally selected right here and we got some of the rocks and we don't want that. All you would do is come down here to the eyedropper with the minus and you're gonna draw a little red line right where you don't want it. It can be any amount and there you go. I will tell you it, the key to having a very good result with this is to try to make as minimal lines as possible. So let's delete, to delete these strokes, all you gotta do is right click on the stroke, delete stroke. I'm gonna delete four and I'm gonna delete three because all we need right now is this first one and this one. Now, when we have everything the way we want it, all of our settings, and like I said, you gotta play with these radius and the smart uh, refine, the denoise and the blur radius. You wanna play with all of that to get the most like accurate mask as possible. So once we do all of that, we come over here to the tracker panel, where it is right down here, and you wanna just track it forward. All right, and just like that, it's gone through and it's tracked the whole entire clip. As you can see, there's a check mark and a check mark there to let you know that it's done, tracked, and keyframed. So now if we just scrub through it, we can see that right down here in the hand, it kind of uh, doesn't really hold that track right there. So what we could do is if we really wanted to, we could add in another little line right there. And now we could just retrack that forward and then you would want to do the same thing, go back to that point, retrack it backwards. And just like that, we have fixed that hand. And it kind of goes over a little bit onto the rock there, and we're missing a little bit there. But like I said, we're gonna put that text right through the center. So I know that I don't need it to be perfect on his lower end, just more precise on the top end here. So depending on what you're utilizing this for, if you're trying to cut somebody out of a scene, or if you're trying to like get someone with a lot of movement, you might have to go through and uh, finesse it a little bit more. And I believe as DaVinci Resolve continues to do updates and upgrades, that this is gonna become only better and better and better. So now if we want to cut this out, essentially, what we wanna do is right click up here. We wanna go to add an alpha output. We bring it down connect it to your alpha output, the alpha to the alpha output. We're gonna to go to the edit page. And as you can see, he's completely cut out. We could literally place him in any different scene that we wanted. We could put him on, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. We, we could literally, let's, let's do this actually right now. We'll put him on a different background and then we'll add a new color in there too. So let's turn that back on. We're gonna drag this up one more layer. We're gonna bring the text beneath here and let's go like this. Go to generators, solid color. Let's put a solid color in there and let's make that color orange. And just like that, I mean, we have him tracked out and text behind him. Now, if I was going to put him on a completely different background, if we can see right here, his glasses has a little bit showing and on his beard, I would have gone through and made that more fine tuned and got rid of all of that. So let's get rid of this background and let's hold alt and drag down. And as you can see, nothing happens. So what we have to do is turn both of these layers off, go back into the color page and we will reset this whole entire thing. Cause this is going to be our background layer. So when we reset this, we're going to detach the alpha output and we should be, we'll go here, reset all grades, edit, turn all of this back on. And just like that, our text is behind him. And because it's on the original background, his glasses and everything else doesn't really matter. It looks spot on. So if we play it from the beginning, I mean, that looks good. And that literally was done in seconds. I mean, if we just scrub through, that looks so good. You can put anything behind them. We can track in any type of logo or emblem or symbol or text 
anything into the scene that we wanted we could place anything behind them if we wanted to add in like a cool sunset anything at all we could put in behind him now and the power of that magic mask is unreal so this is such a huge tool just for this but you can also utilize it to color grade differently in your scene so if we were here we could come now and we went back to the edit page we can make this a compound clip right click new compound clip create if we went now into the color tab we could color grade this add in anything we wanted like we'll just darken it with a pulling the lift down gain up let's open it up just a little bit let's add a little saturation and we can come down here let's add in some orange maybe a little bit of blue or like that and we can really get this looking cool but you can utilize it to do color grades in a whole new way as well so if i wanted to color grade the background differently than him i could mask him out and do the same so again the power of the magic mask is magical all right guys so that is the new magic mask within davinci resolve it can be used in so many different ways it can help you replace backgrounds put text behind you it can help with color grading and adjusting different exposures of different parts of your image it is literally a magic mask it can be utilized in so many different ways if you guys use this link your work in the comments below i'd love to check out what you're doing i'm back to doing davinci resolve tutorials every single week i'm gonna try to do one video a week because we got a lot of new things to cover i'm not going to go through all of them in one video i am going to break it down in separate videos so we get the most out of each and every video we put out but also i'll be doing some gear reviews and i've been shooting a lot of music videos so if you want to see some behind the scenes and how i've been doing that especially with everything going on in the world how I've been staying safe. I can show you guys some behind the scenes videos of that as well. So I appreciate you all for waiting on me, being patient with me, and uh, just know that we're back at it. We're gonna have more each and every week. New fusion tricks, new coloring like tricks. Uh, yeah, I'm just excited. I got, I learned, I've learned a lot in this time and I'm excited to share it all with you. So thank you guys. And I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.